want to talk about what's going on with Greg Abbott and Daniel Perry, right? So who exactly is Daniel Perry? What's what's happening with this, right? You may be saying. Well, Daniel Perry, if you remember right, he shot someone at a protest about uh, two years ago now. I think it was in 2021, right? So long story short, I actually did a, a few videos on this when it happened um, because it was basically the most blatant case of straight up murder that you can possibly see, right? And uh, what's going on with it is that Greg Abbott wants to pardon him. So the, the trial for Danu Perry just finished up and he was found guilty. And now um, Greg Abbott wants to, you know, has basically said that he's going to pardon him. And he said, this is a quote from Greg Abbott, who is the governor of Texas. I look forward to seeing, I uh, look forward to approving the board's pardon recommendation as soon as it hits my desk. So now what exactly happened? Let's do a little reminder here because, you know, a few years have passed and it's not very fresh in any in everyone's minds. What exactly happened was that Daniel Perry was working as an Uber driver and he was driving around. This is in Texas, right? And there was a Black Lives Matter protest. He was stopped because they were protesting in the street, right? He was stopped and honking at them, right? Then Daniel Perry decides to run a red light and drives into the crowd, right? So that's the first sign that this was premeditated is that he ran a red light and drove into the crowd specifically, right? So a guy named Garrett Foster walks up to the car. Garrett Foster was openly carrying an AK-47, which in Texas is legal, right? And here's the thing, it's legal, so you can't see it as threatening, right? If it was illegal, that'd be one thing. If he wasn't supposed to have an, ass an assault rifle like that, you know, if that is, I mean, I think an AK-47 qual qualifies as an assault rifle, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know much about guns, but I'm assuming it does, right? You would think if you were to see some dude walk up to your car with one of those rifles that you would, you know, be in fear, right? But here's the thing, is that he wasn't pointing it at the car, okay? And uh, Daniel Perry admitted as much because there's actual, like, there's, there's not video of the shooting, but there's video of, like, the aftermath and stuff, as far as I could tell, right? I don't think there's video of the shooting. I don't know. I could be wrong there. But anyway, Daniel uh, Daniel Perry admitted to the police that um, Garrett Foster was not pointing his weapon at him, right? And he shot him before he could. And he said to the police, I didn't want to give him the chance to point it at me. So he was not under threat, Right. Foster was not pointing the gun at him. Now, why did Foster walk up to the car in the first place? Right. Well, here's the thing. There was a very large number of people running over protesters because of Black Lives Matter. Right. I hope you guys remember this. I've done. I remember covering this when this shit was happening. Right. That was a thing that happened a lot. Okay, there's actually, I have a, a Wikipedia page. There's a, there's a Wikipedia page, right? Which I'll put a link down in the thing. But between, um, let me see, let me open it up though. Right, here's the Wikipedia page. I'll put that down in the uh, chat for y'all. According to Wikipedia, between May 27th and September 27th of 2020, there were 104 incidents of vehicles driving into protests. Two fatalities that occurred during that time period. 
right? So it's not, you know, so that's kind of why he went up to the car in the first place, right? In fact, a week before this happened, there was a very high-profile case, right? In um, May of 2020, right? A week before this shit happens. Or, sorry, not a week, but about... um, Actually, yeah, it was about two weeks before this happened, right? A guy in fucking um, Oklahoma plowed a, a, his truck carrying a horse trailer through a crowd of protesters, right? And he caused a, guy, a man to fall off of the uh, overpass. Thankfully, nobody died, but the guy that fell off of the uh, freeway overpass ended up getting paralyzed, right? That was a week before this shit happened, right? Um, another one, September 2020, right? A little bit later, this is in Johnson City, Tennessee. Um, somebody got ran over at a BLM protest, right? Um, the guy who did it made jokes on Twitter about running over protesters, right? Thankfully, nobody died, but the victim in this case had a concussion, brain bleed, and two broken legs. In both of those cases that I just mentioned, no charges were filed because nobody died. <laughs> All right. So that's the shit that was happening, right? And I also want, would like to remind everybody that up until this point and sometime after, right, there were laws being proposed in multiple red states in order to make it legal to run over protesters, okay? This is actually something that started after 2017, after the um, Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville. So if you remember what happened there, right, the one fatality that occurred in Charlottesville was from uh, a woman named Heather Heyer being run over by some white supremacist piece of fucking shit. I think his name was uh, Jared something. I can't remember, right? I'm not going to look his name up. But um, white supremacist asshole runs over Heather Heyer and kills her, right? And after that happened, there were six states that tried to pass laws that to make it to remove the liability if uh, if you run over somebody during a protest, right? And all you have to do is say you thought your life was in danger. Those states were Florida, North Carolina, Rhode Island, Tennessee, Texas, right? All of those failed, thankfully, after 2017. But then Black Lives Matter starts up in 2019 and 2020, and three states actually do pass this law. Oklahoma, Iowa, and Florida actually passed laws that um, punished protesters, right? Gave them fines for blocking the road and stuff, and made it legal to kill them. Made it, made it legal to run them over. And all you have to do is say, my life was in danger. Right? So this is what the climate was like back then okay it was a thing that was happening it was there were right wingers on twitter on facebook on you know social media spreading around memes and jokes and stuff about running over protesters right people were actually fucking doing it right so this is why you know and then you say okay well you know, pro like uh, right wingers are always saying shit like, "Well, we need good guys with guns to defend us from the fucking murderers and stuff like that," right? So, um, Garrett Foster actually was one of those good guys with a gun. He was a uh, veteran, right? Just like um, Daniel Perry was a veteran, <laughs> right? They're both veterans. Garrett Foster was there with his. Um, quadruple his, his girlfriend who was a, or his wife I think actually I think they were married and his wife was a quadruple amputee that he had known since they were 17 and he was like taking care of her and they're at this protest right so imagine you're imagine you're Daniel uh you're um excuse me imagine you're Garrett Foster you're at a protest you're with your wife who's in a wheelchair who doesn't have any arms or legs and then some fucking crazy person runs a red light. You know, he's, he's sitting there honking, honking, runs a red light, goes careening into the crowd, 
you may be a little afraid that, hey, this guy might try to run some people over. And you're, you know, especially your wife who's vulnerable. She can't run away on her own. So what does he do? He's a good guy with a gun, right? The conservatives are always saying that we need good guys with guns. So what's he do? He goes over to fucking check it out, right? To make sure this guy's not going to kill anybody, right? And Garrett Foster gets blown away for being a good guy with a gun here. Now, I remember this shit happening. I remember all of the Facebook memes and where they basically, the conservatives, just turn their backs on this guy, right? And here's the thing, okay? Garrett Foster was, you know, not a liberal, okay? He wasn't like a pansy, and you know, Second Amendment, like, you know, denialist or anything like that. He was like a, se- a supporter of the Second Amendment, you know? <laughs> right? He was everything that the conservatives gaslight us into saying we need. Right? What is that they say? You know, the only way to stop mass shootings is to have, you know, an armed populace. It's there to it's there to protect you, all that other shit, blah, 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 blah. The minute somebody who, you know, who they don't agree with politically takes that stance. They just turn right around and shit all over them, right? And I remember this. It's in my old video. It's it's roughly from... I can't remember the name of the video, but it's about three years ago. I did this, and I went over some of those... I went over some of the memes that were on Facebook. I went over some of the comments and things of be- people calling this guy uh, Garrett Foster a traitor and all that stuff and saying that he deserved it and all this shit. And it's just like... Uh, most despicable fucking things. This guy's a veteran. He was there defending his his wife, his paraplegic wife. Not even that paraplegic, quadruple amputee, excuse me, right? Big, it, it just really goes to show that conservatives are the biggest pieces of shit ever. Like, <laughs> like I don't know, man. The, the conservative hate machine online is they're the most despicable fucking people you can ever think of. So anyway, Greg Abbott wants to pardon this guy, right? Let's talk a little bit more about Daniel Perry, right? Daniel Perry was found guilty, and apparently there was, during the course of discovery, they found him posting a lot of very hateful, bigoted memes on his phone there, including memes having to do with running people over, and killing protesters, right? So I've got here, this is actually, um, let me go ahead and put this down in the chat for you guys if you want to read them yourself as well. They went through Daniel Perry's phone. Let's go ahead and turn this on. This is the court filing in the Daniel Perry case, right, from the state of Texas. Uploaded by the Houston Chronicle. And basically, this goes through the contents of Daniel Perry's phone. Let's turn this, let's make this full screen. Now, I'm not going to read all of these because there's like 150 of these fucking things, right? There's so many that, you know. But um, basically, <laughs> there is a lot of uh, a lot of very, very damning material on Daniel Perry's phone. Here's a couple that came to mind that I saw. Let's go over to number 33 here. Let's find 33. In fact, I think I can just kind of do a control F search for that. Uh, Way up here, I think, right up here. That's 33. 33, a review of Daniel Perry's cell phone extraction Revealed that on an unknown date in an unknown county in Texas, the device encountered a media file that is a meme. The meme has a photo on top and a photo on the bottom. The photo, the top photo is a policeman with a text, you can't just run over people. The bottom photo shows a freight truck with the text, it's okay, I'm essential. <laughs> Posting uh, memes about running people over, right? Here's another one. 
Number 108 was another one about running people over. Okay, in June 3rd, 2020, that's before the um, shooting, right? Post the meme. At the top, there's a photo of the Joker. The text says, I'm going to go block traffic. The photo below show him being hit by a car and the text reading, I'm the victim. Mm -hmm. He posted that twice. <laughs> the next one says the same thing. Apparently, he really liked that one about running people over, right? Here's one if you're wondering about um, Daniel Perry's politics, number 35. Up here, let's go up uh, to number, here we go. Number 35, a review of Daniel Perry's cell phone extraction revealed that on an unknown date in an unknown county in Texas, the device encountered a media file that shows... A white box with the text, it's okay to be white. We all remember what it's okay to be white was, right, folks? That was a meme created by, I think it was created by 4chan, right? That quickly got picked up by all of the right-wing Nazis, white supremacists, and other assorted um, assholes out there, you know? <laughs> In fact, I even did another video in response to a dude named Baring about it. And, uh, yeah, it's just another dog whistle, you know. Another another idiotic fucking dipshit bunk bumper sticker slogan swung around by white supremacists and white nationalists and shit like that. So, yep. Uh, let's see. Number 59 is pretty telling. Let's open that up. 59. Let's go back to the first one. 59. A review down on Perry's cell phone shows these messages, right? These are, these are messages he did with somebody. Outgoing message. That means that's Daniel Perry saying it. It's an outgoing message, right? I guess it's not letting me highlight things. I killed a homeless man by accident. Outgoing message. The police already know they let me go. His friend, Justin Smith. Huh. So, yeah. Wonder what that's all about. Apparently he killed, uh, on March 30th, killed a homeless man? I'd like to get some details on that. Very interesting. Number 60. Uh, let's see. This is another meme. Okay, it's a meme with a photo of a woman holding her child's head underneath the bathwater. And the text that reads, when your daughter's first crush is a little... Uh, can I say that on Twitch there? I mean, it's not technically the N-word, but it's pretty close. <laughs> I probably could get away with saying it, but I'm not going to. You can just read it. A little N-word boy. Yeah. So, likes to run people over, may have killed a homeless man, pretty racist to boot. Number 61, Daniel Perry wrote a message on Facebook that said, looks like I'm a racist for stating facts about the Chinese virus. If the president and Mike Savage can say it, why can't I? COVID denier as well, huh? Makes sense. You know, the, the Venn diagram for uh, white supremacists and COVID deniers are pretty close, if not the same thing. Pretty close, though. Here's the damning one, which got him, basically made him lose his court case and got him convicted. Okay, conversation with Justin Smith, May 31st, 2020, Daniel Perry. This is the day the shit went down, right? I may have to kill a few people on my way to work there, riding outside my apartment's complex, right? Actually, no, it's, I don't think, wait, is that the day that it happened? No, I think this is a few days before, excuse me. Justin Smith, can you legally do so? Daniel Perry, if they attack me or try to pull me out of my car, then yes, right? He is correct there. You are allowed to defend yourself, self-defense only, right? If someone does attack you, right? 
and you are supposed to use lethal force only as the last resort. Although it's Texas, so I don't really know the uh, law in Texas. I think Texas has one of those stand your ground things where all you have to do is just pretend that, hey, I'm standing my ground. So maybe you don't, maybe you are allowed to use fucking lethal force immediately. I don't know in Texas. Anyway, if I do, if I do it because I'm driving by, then no. You get that distinction there, folks, right? If they attack me or try to pull me out of my car, then yes. If I do it, then if I do it because I'm driving by, then no. Right? Justin Smith, yeah, right, lol. Make sure to only use one shot on the protesters. So if they try to flood you, you got enough rounds for them all. I will only shoot the ones in front and push the pedal to the metal. You got that much control over your bloodlust. Lil boy, have you matured? <laughs> All you would beat the fuck out of them a few, then rape a few. Wow. His friend Justin Smith sounds like a fucking piece of shit, too. Down to Perry, look, I would probably barely have ammo left with all of this tactic. I have to conserve my ammo for the trip back home. Get a bigger clip, lol. It's not about the clip. I only have 150 rounds. <laughs> He's got 150 rounds. Oh, I only have 150 rounds. Justin Smith, lol, you're fine. Daniel Perry, dude, I need to save ammo for when I go up to Dallas to visit you. Daniel Perry, there are at least a thousand riders and they probably have guns. Justin Smith, what will be the turnout you think? Daniel Perry, no protesters go near me in my car. Justin Smith, can you catch me an N-word daddy? Daniel Perry, that's why I'm hoping Justin Smith, yay. That's the one that got his ass convicted right there. Now, it specifically how? And it was this line right here. Right. This is the line that got his ass convicted. If they attack me or try to pull me out of my car, then yes. If I do it just because I'm driving by, then no. Right. So, what does that show? That shows that he was basically itching for a fight. He was looking for an opportunity. It may not have been premeditated. He didn't premeditatively drive to that specific protest in order to kill specifically, you know, Garrett Foster. But it proves that he was sort of itching for a fight there, that he was looking to find somebody to go murder. And what did he actually do, right? He, remember, was parked and then ran a red light and went specifically into that crowd, right? Running the red light is also very damning because if it was unintentional, right, he wouldn't have purposely ran that red light. He wouldn't have drove into that crowd. He would have waited. He would have gone around. He would. So no, all of the signs, you know, are pointing that <laughs> are pointing to the fact that this is what the guy went there to do. That he was looking for the opportunity to kill someone, right? These messages point that way. What he actually did point that way, right? The fact that he fired when Garrett Foster was not pointing his gun at him also points in that direction that this was premeditated murder, right? The governor of Texas wants to pardon this guy. He can't wait to pardon this guy. I mean, let's go. I'm not going to read the rest of these. There's a there's a whole list of this stuff. There's there's more about running over protesters. There's more racist shit in here. There's more. There's pro Confederate memes. There's a bunch of shit going on in here. Basically shows that Daniel Perry is a piece of fucking garbage, right? He's a racist piece of human fucking shit <laughs> who went to a protest to kill somebody, saw his opportunity to do it, and then fucking did it, and was, pro you know, and he's going to get off. He's not going to spend one day in prison, right? What's also unique about this is that the calls to pardon Daniel Perry were happening even before the trial was over with because it looked like he was going to lose it. 
you know, you had Tucker Carlson and shit calling for it on his show, saying, calling the guy a hero and all this other fucking bullshit. Right? Kind of reminds me a lot of Kyle Rittenhouse, doesn't it? I mean, same kind of thing, you know? Somebody shoots someone else and is basically getting off scot-free, and is it's being highly politicized by the right wing, you know? Because the right wing, this is what they want to do. But, you know, we, we really need to remember that, right? We really need to remember that, you know, the reason why this guy's being treated like a hero, the same reason why fucking, is this, it's the same reason that uh, why fucking Kyle Rittenhouse is be, was treated like a hero. It's the same reason why fucking George Zimmerman was, was treated like a hero, right? Because the right wing are filled with violent assholes who have wet dreams about doing what this guy did, right? You saw it there yourself, right? We're reading through those, reading through this dude's uh, Facebook history, his Twitter history. He was tweeting memes about this shit. He was talking to his friends about this shit, right? He was basically dreaming about it. They can't fucking wait, you know? He's not the only one. There are tons and tons of violent psychopaths out there that, uh, you know, basically can't wait until the fucking Civil War starts. Do you ever see that clip? There there was a clip not that long ago, a fucking TPUSA clip with fucking, what the fuck is that asshole's name? <laughs> right. The uh, Kirk, uh, no, no, Charlie Kirk. That's the guy. The dude with the little face looks like a fucking Dick Tracy villain. You know. There was a clip that went around a few months ago about uh, a guy at a TP USA event who basically gets up on the mic and says, when do we get to start using the guns? When do we get to start killing these people? Right. It's, you know, and then these are supposed to be the people that want to defend children. These are supposed to be the people who are like good Christians, right? And all that stuff, you know. Jesus doesn't say you're allowed to run people over if they're protesting something for something that you don't like. That's not what Jesus says at all. <laughs> it's the most, you know, and that's really the, the irony behind all of this is that the way these people live and the things they actually do, their actions are in stark contrast to the things they actually proclaim that they believe right running people over and murdering them and shooting them right is the most anti-christian shit that you can possibly fucking do it's the most anti-christian thing ever it's as a christian you are supposed to turn the other cheek you're supposed to be a pacifist you're supposed to allow people you know when people are violent you're supposed to not fight back that is what you're supposed to do. Those are the, that's what Jesus Christ himself says to do. People, but they don't do that, you know, right? All of these uh, conservative, you know, libertarians and shit like that, they always rally against government power, and they always talk about how it's like, oh, they want the government out of our bedroom, and government shouldn't be allowed to tell us to do, and our, we have rights, all this other shit, blah, 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 right? And then they turn the other way when the government bans books that they don't like right the government uh, takes away the rights of trans people right prevents them from using the bathrooms that they want to use right prevents uh trans athletes from competing takes away their rights their ability to get trans affirming care at all like what just happened in missouri right how come we're not seeing libertarians out there marching in the streets about this? How come we're not seeing conservatives who say that it's like you know, your individual rights are supposed to trump the, the rights of the state? How come they're not out there protesting this stuff, right? <laughs> How come they're not out there like, you know... I mean, you would think, according to the ideals they they claim to have, that they should be on our side, but they're not, right? Because they never were. 
They never were. It's all bullshit. It's all a lie. It's all a grift. All they're interested in is control and money. Money, power, and control, that's all they were ever interested in. Right? They'll never be on your side. Okay? If you're a gay person, if you're a trans person, right? <laughs> They'll never be on your side. Right? If you believe in freedom. Right? If you believe in the, the you know, because it's a fact, folks. That if they can take it away for them, if they can take it away for the trans people and the gay people, then they can take it away for you, right? And it won't be that far. It won't be that, you know, it won't be too long before you're starting to see laws like this. But now they're applying towards black people. Now they're applying towards Latinos. They're applying to atheists. They're applying to anyone who's not a Christian, right? That's what's next. That's what's coming next. You know, you think it's just now, it's just only the trans people, only the gay people that are getting it, right? Oh, uh, it's only abortion, whatever. Okay, the abortion rights, okay, whatever. You can just go to another state and get an abortion, blah, 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 blah. Oh, that doesn't matter. Oh, they're banning this book, whatever. You can just buy it on Amazon, blah, 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 right? You think it doesn't affect you, it will. It's only a matter of time, right? Because if they can get away with it, they will, folks. This is not a fallacy. It's not, you know, you're going to sit here and say, you know, if you're going to say that this is a, it's a slippery slope. You have no evidence of that. This is where, no, it's not a slippery slope. That's their plan. That's their plan. Their plan is to dominate every aspect of your life. That's why they call it Christian dominionism right? That's their plan. Their plan is to dominate everything, to force you to believe what they believe, right? To force you to act in the way that they want you to act. And you won't have the ability to determine your own life. You won't have any say so about your own body, whether you're a man or a woman, they'll take that away from you, right? You won't have any say about what your kids do, what their education is, what they learn in school, they're going to dictate that to you, right? Pretty soon, if it keeps going, if they get complete control, you won't have any control over where you work, right? If you're not uh, the right skin color, right? If you're not the right religion, if you're not the right sexual orientation, then you can kiss your job goodbye, right? You know, whatever, because it'll be, you know, only Christians will have rights. You know, that's, I'm not making that up. These are people that believe that the Constitution only applies to Christians, that only Christians will have rights. This is a Christian country, blah, 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 right? And it just, it's just, oh, just a coincidence that uh, being a Christian aligns to being a cis white, uh, cis white person, a cis straight white person, <laughs> right? And everybody else is going to be a second-class citizen. If you don't think it can happen here, you're solely mistaken. It can and it will if we don't stop it. You have to get involved, folks, right? This is the time. This is now. Now is the time, right? We're seeing it, and which is good. We are seeing young people out there getting involved, which is great. You know, this, this last election was fantastic, right? And now even small elections that we're seeing in places like Wisconsin and stuff with the uh, Supreme Court there, that's fantastic. We need to keep that going, right? We need to ride that momentum into next year and beyond, right? And not just the presidential election, not just for your senator, right? Every election, everywhere, up to, down to and including your school board. You have to be involved for that, right? Every time. Vote every time. Right? Protest the things you don't like. You know? Donate your money. Donate your time when you can. Now, some people can't donate money, right? Because they don't have the money. Donate your time then. Right? Some people don't have time. They work too hard. Donate money. Right? There's stuff you can do. If you don't even believe in that, if you don't, if you don't believe in voting, I mean, this is not, we need you to vote. 
But even still, even if you don't want to vote, right, get involved somehow. Go out there, you know, do, but you got to do more than just protesting, right? Going out and holding a sign doesn't change shit. It doesn't. It'll never change if that's all you do. If, if, if you just go out and hold signs on a street corner for a few hours, then leave and expect it to change, it's not going to change, right? You have to, we have to use every, every trick in the bag, every weapon we have. It's voting, it's protesting, it's being active, it's direct actions, the courts, everything. You got to fight from, you have to fight them on, on all fronts, and we can't lose. We cannot afford to lose, right? Because what's at stake is our country, right? Do you want this to be an America where people are free, where they get to live the way they want to live, where you have self-determination, right? Or do you want it to be a country where they're allowed to, you know, dictate those things to you, right? <laughs> Sometimes dictate those things to you with possible lethal consequences. Because that's, that's what's in, that's what's at stake here, folks. It, it cannot be more important the next, you know, the next few years, really. It cannot be more important to the fate of this country. Hello folks, if you like what I do and you want to support the channel, please consider buying something from my SD shop, supporting me on Patreon, liking and subscribing, and checking me out across my social media links listed below. Thank you all so much, and see you next time.